going to take a small electric shock for me. Just a high voltage, just run it through your fingers, down the body, round the left side. Would you like to get an electric shock on national television? Electric <laughs> shock. Would you be prepared to take an electric shock for me? No. Just to see what your thresholds are. We need to find out how much electricity people are prepared to take. Do you feel like getting a bit of an electric shock this afternoon? It wouldn't hurt too much. There's small stinging. No, are you sure? It doesn't hurt too badly. I think it's a sort of a double-edged sword. Everyone uh, uses electricity uh, because they have to. And on the other hand, everyone's a little bit scared of it. It takes only 50 volts of electricity to penetrate skin and be felt. Once through the skin, the salty fluid around the body cells conducts the electricity to the nerves. Tom is about to shock some unsuspecting shoppers. It isn't just a measure of how tough you are. How much pain you feel depends on another property of electricity, resistance. The ability of a substance to conduct electricity, or not. The thinner your skin, the lower your resistance, and the bigger the zap. Lisa checks skin resistance measured in ohms. So let's just measure and then we'll, we'll see what we get. This gentleman is... You're around 200,000, 200,000, it changes. The higher the number, the thicker the skin. So less electricity passes across it, and less pain is felt. 400,000, 400,000. At least, that's the theory. Oh, really oh, high. Yes, yeah, it's way high, twice as high as you, a million. <laughs> get the shot. Well, then you, get, then you feel it, at least. Ready? Here we go. Don't be scared. Ready? Um, I don't want to be shocked. You didn't even feel it. Does it work? Yeah. <laughs> Because you have a very high resistance. Mm -hmm. So the theory works for high resistance. Less electricity passes across thick skin, so less pain. Will low resistance mean more electricity and maximum pain? Oh. <laughs> 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 you are going to... Look, she's shaking. Don't worry. <laughs> On you go. Deep breath. Oh, look at that! It was great to see people being shocked. As terrible as it sounds, it's like watching someone slip on a banana peel. You know you're not supposed to laugh, and yet you can't help it. I'm going to go, laddie. I'm going to let go. It's all right, Jesus. Ay, ay, ay! Look at Lisa. Lisa's like... Small amounts of externally applied voltage can make us yelp with pain and cry with laughter. But we actually generate our own electricity to power our bodies. Everything in our bodies is electrical. Everything, from the words that I'm, I'm saying right now to uh, my hand movement. Everything comes from our brain and it's electrical impulses that actually let us function. So our entire body is a walking piece of electronic equipment. Anatomist Luigi Galvani was dissecting a frog one day when his steel scalpel touched a brass hook holding the frog's leg. The wet muscle acted like a conductor and the two different metals generated an electrical current causing the frog's leg to twitch. He'd accidentally discovered that electricity could stimulate nerves. Arthur Elsinar is a performance artist who uses computer-controlled pulses to trick his body sending electrical impulses directly to his nerves, making his face twitch in time to music. <laughs> Arthur's apparatus only puts out 20 volts, but because it's applied in just the right place and pulses just like a nerve signal, it takes control of the muscles. Well, shall I just turn it up a, a little bit okay. again to see how, right. how it goes? So I think now we are at about 15 volts. And um, there it goes. And I'm horrific. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> that is about... Oh, it's making, it's making my teeth tingle. The only thing what, what you f really feel is the blood going through your skin because yeah. I have to get to the nerve. Because you're being my brain. Another reason it feels odd. The pulsing is continuous. 
so it doesn't give the muscles a chance to relax. There he goes. Where is Tom when you need him? Okay, okay. <laughs> there is something very sexy about electricity because it, it is part of our makeup. It is something that makes us human. And there must be some way that we can interact with that. This may not be the type of interaction Mark was hoping for. It's like a roller coaster. You're a torturer. You're getting to love Lisa's research for a human electrical circuit started small. Let's try if we can see if we can pass the voltage through both of you. Oh. They explored the way humans conduct electricity. When Tom releases the button, a small zap of 50 volts should flow across the circuit made by a couple of girls holding hands. Yeah. <laughs> 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 How was it really there as well? Could you feel it in that hand? Was it a bonding experience? No. Voltage measures the force with which electricity travels, but volts alone don't kill. More important are the amps, the amount of electrical current that's flowing. Tom's bike generates enough voltage to feel, <laughs> but hardly any current. That was great. 50 volts was enough for two people, but a massive voltage will be needed for more than 200. <laughs> Back in their workshop, the team realizes that they could be exposing a large group of people to a small risk of cardiac arrest. Just holding hands could put their hearts in danger. Is that safe? Because it's going up the arm, through the heart, and then out the arm. No, I don't, I don't think it is. So we can't have all our people holding hands, holding hands like this because then it's just going to go and it's going to be so much voltage. Yeah. So how do we get them? It's just, even just a tiny, tiny current applied directly to the heart can stop the heart. And even if you put a nine, look, one of those little 9-volt batteries directly onto the heart, that can stop the heart as well. Yeah. Well, what if we just do one arm? Okay. Right arm. That would work. I know the kids. So an entire circle. It goes all the way around, right? Yeah. yeah. To ground. Yeah, that would be fine. The team has found a safer way of doing the stunt. If the volunteers link right arm to right arm, the electricity will take the path of least resistance, traveling only through arms and not through bodies. Armed with new knowledge, the team moves to the next stage testing the conductivity of monks. This is going to show two things. The first thing is that we actually have a connection going from one end of the wind switch to the other. And the second thing is, going to, is that it's going to be perfectly safe for the monks. Super. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Okay. I'm just going to give us a bit of a wind up. Three, two, one. Oh, you right. saw that safe? Yeah, it's fine. Let's go find some real monks. Now, I'm not sure how the monks of today are going to compare with the monks of yesterday, so we will have to see how willing they are to participate in the name of science, of course. I'm going to lay down the polystyrene to right. insulate Give these your guys. Hand. No, I'm all right. Okay. Okay, guys, we're going to have you in a moment standing on these because it will keep you insulated. Two and a half centuries ago, when Jean-Antoine Nollet sparked his monks, he made them stand on resin, an insulator just like styrofoam. He understood that the monks needed to be insulated so the charge would run through all of them, not leak away to earth. Only the last monk was grounded, completing the circuit. We could step on the polystyrene one at a time. Okay. Perfect. Just a little, little bit over. How's that look for spacing? Does it look good? That's fine. You can do the yeah, I'm going to be there. Right? Let's put our earthing rod in at this end. Sure. While, while Lisa's pointing that in, it's, it's important to remember these are to stop the electric charge going into the ground. These are your insulating blocks. So try and stay always in the yeah. center of the block. That's what's important. How's that right. ground? You have to roll your left That's sleeve. Right. You just put this on your left wrist. You this will basically I, ground you. Ground your back. And stop the watch, yeah. Mark. Yeah. We're grounded at this end. Okay. Okay. Because if it? you hold hands, then we've got the half. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay. 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 We don't really see it necessarily. Do we touch it? To we're going to have a problem with these sleeves going up. With these sleeves going up. Can we do it lower? I think we're going to, we might have to try it lower. Because the all the, let's get them all facing the right direction. If okay. If you all turn to face this way. Perfect. Great. 
Now let's demonstrate. We can demonstrate. Hey, at least, at least. If we, show, if we show them, right? So what we want you to do. I think with the monks, we learned we learned a lot. Um, we learned that we definitely needed to have a game plan. It was, to me, it, it felt like chaos. Actually, it was like trying to trying to get them to do it, and we didn't really know exactly what we were doing, and it was we didn't have a plan. Move close to the person in front of you, so that you can grab their arm at 90 bare degrees skin. on bare skin. It's important that you have a good grip. Winding up the machine builds static charge. A static shock is the kind you get from touching a metal doorknob. Static energy discharges in a fraction of a second, quickly dropping the current to zero and making it safe. When Tom moves his magic wand close, a spark should jump and zap the monks. <laughs> Got it? Oh wow! That was that was good. Two, two. two. two pulses. I think it, as he brought as he brought the ball in, he, there was so much charge. He got a first spike, and then it came in again. He got a second spike. So very very quickly, you got two discharges. It worked. We managed to pull it off. Luckily, but, but I mean, monks were probably about the most patient people you could ask for. With the mass electrification, we're going to be getting all types of people, you know, and people, especially in these days, have less and less patience, it seems, every day, you know, so in order to get them excited about it and to do it, we were going to have to really have our ass. On your right arm, take that and put it into your pocket, because there is a, a small possibility that it could damage the watch. Mark takes his volunteers through a carefully planned sequence of events. Failure to strictly follow them could end in tragedy. If you feel a small tingling, all right, as the voltage goes through, as the shock goes through, don't let go. Try to hang on. It's all right. It shouldn't be a large shock, but you might feel something. Step onto the polystyrene. Make sure you're not touching it. Make sure there's enough space to touch the person's elbow in front. So it's a pinch. So you can pinch it. Oh. No. Can you, can you just a little back there, a little back, a little back, back, until you feel your elbow touching that hand. Everyone's got a good grip. Don't. It, uh, well, we uh, might do, so it's really important. If you feel a tingling, don't let go. It's really if the rehearsal is successful and the charge travels down the whole line, it will light up a ring of neon bulbs. Okay, I think we're all clear. Marcy, happy? Happy. Great. Three, Three two, two, one, one. zero. It appeared that the zap traveled slowly down the line, the people nearest the generator reacting before those at the other end. But in reality, the girl in the middle broke contact, and when she touched the person in front of her again, everyone felt a large jolt as the charge traveled on and lit up the lights. I connected everybody up, and we said, one, two, three, we're all ready. And then there was this sound this crackle that ran down these 20 people. There was one girl that looked at me and just said, what the hell have you done? What, what was that you did to me? You, you never told me that it was going to be like this. I'm not supposed to experience it. I'm looking around at her. Did anyone else think this was going to happen? I don't think I ever accounted for the fact the effect was going to be as strong as that. That's the first time I got a healthy respect for it and realized that why we were doing all the safety precautions. The girl who broke the line let go when the current jarred her funny bone. So Mark decides that for the record attempt, everyone should hold the forearm of the person in front so the current doesn't pass through their elbows. Just in case something does go wrong, paramedics are standing by with defibrillators. Final checks are underway.
Group number one is on their way in. Isn't this exciting? <laughs> Can you hear me? How are we doing? Let's do this thing. Let's break a world record here. Where's Tommy? Let's see. Go down here. He's down there. We'll go find him. He's down here. Group number seven is the very, the most important group because yeah. we are at the very end of the line. I'm going to be standing up there with that lighted ping pong bat, and then you guys are up the ramp, and the voltage basically is going to start at that end at the Van de Graaff generator. It's going to zip all the way around all these 200 odd people, and then it's going to come through us, the best people in the group, of course. <laughs> Up this ramp, to me standing at the top holding this thing, and we're all going to have a hell of a good time and break a record. Yeah, we've nearly there. We've got, it's probably two-thirds full at the moment. Everyone's still a little bit disorganized. They're trying to get the, the spacing out. The spacing's so important to get right, because if you don't get the spacing, the electricity will discharge between the bodies instead of down their arms. to me for the next two minutes. When we do the experiment, it's really important that you do it correctly. One person that makes a mistake lets us all down. It is so important that every one of you connect properly with the next person. So if you do not, it might result in a small little jolt. So it's important that you do listen. Starting. Step up into the centre. Make sure you're facing the right way. You're not touching the person in front of you. Listen to the guys in the green and Lisa and Tom for where you have to shuffle to. You're all right there, Tom. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, quiet, please. Connect up. Mm -hmm. This is the final check. <laughs> 